The news that the next World's Fair will be held in Milan, Italy in 2015 started us wondering about the history and purpose of World's Fairs. So we invited historian Rose Lillian to our studio to hear more about them. Dr Lillian, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Now, the World's Fair. The idea behind these expositions, or expos, is almost medieval in origin, isn't it? Well, trade fairs have certainly been around for a long time. Medieval trade fairs were basically chances to buy and sell goods that were easily transported from place to place. You know, textiles, spices, leather, that kind of thing. But in England and France in the 19th century, a few things changed. Firstly, the focus shifted to showing off new technologies. On top of that, the atmosphere became more like a carnival with public entertainment and rides. Finally and crucially, national governments became involved in the planning and funding. The end result of this process was the Crystal Palace exhibition in London in 1851. London in 1851. What made that fair so special? Well, it was far more than a trade fair, and it's been the model for World's Fairs ever since. Of course, advertising and selling are still a large part of it, but expos since 1851 have been as much about education, conveying values and shaping plans for the future as they've been about the promotion of goods. When US President Franklin Roosevelt spoke at the 1939 New York World's Fair, he described that event as a tribute to technology and innovation. And that's been true of most of the modern fairs. Can you give us some examples? Oh, there are so many. We can start with the light bulbs, shown by Thomas Edison at the International Exhibition of Electricity in Paris in 1881. We can move forward to the first American television broadcasts from that 1939 fair in New York, or the moving sidewalks that first became widely known at Expo 70 in Osaka. World's fairs have been terrifically important for promoting technological advances. Well, jump forward to Milan next year. We live in times when even satellite television is old technology compared to the internet. Who needs a World's Fair? And what could possibly be seen in Milan that a thousand times more people can't learn about online? Well, that's a very good question. I would say, first of all, I think many people believe World's Fairs no longer exist. But the last expo held in China in 2010 is proof to the contrary. More than 70 million people actually went to that fair in Shanghai. Its theme was building better cities for tomorrow. And there were some extraordinary exhibits on things like construction technologies and environmental protection. And there were many innovative buildings with fantastic, exciting designs. But can we still expect World's Fairs to show us something new and fascinating? I think what we expect from World's Fairs probably has less to do with specific technologies than with the overall impact. There's something about actually being at these fairs that you can't get from the internet. You can certainly look at photographs and videos, but it's the difference between watching your favourite sports team on TV and actually being in the stadium. That experience in many ways is just so overwhelming, and that's why people continue to love going to World's Fairs. Well, Dr Lillian, thank you very much for talking with us. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. That's historian Rose Lillian. She's a scholar of World's Fairs.